Trauma. You know, these guys could be psychotic. Outright negligence. Defrauding the fund is literally denying Kenyans healthcare, which is literally leading to actually killing. Impunity <laughs> and arrogance. <laughs> A long concealed secret that has forced victims to live in fear until now. This story may be difficult to watch due to the inconceivable trauma female patients have had to endure at the hands of a man who abused his power and privilege. Your discretion is advised. A two-month journey of discovery behind the veil of serenity in Sipili town Laikipia leads us through rocky terrains to uncover a dark truth masked by a crippling fear. The path leads us to Esther, not her real name. Esther has sowed many seeds in her time as a farmer. Yet she never believed a seed of discontent would be one of them until 2021, when she was admitted at the Sipili Maternity Hospital in Laikipia, a place she was reluctant to ever visit. The hospital is the only one in the area that accepts NHIF as a payment method for treatment. It attracts streams of patients looking for critical medical services. Esther was admitted to the facility in severe pain from a condition that left her struggling to walk. It was the start of her torture. Okay, okay, Esther tried to ignore the unsettling feeling of the man who kept visiting her room. She later found out that the man called George Mbogwa was the owner of the hospital. For an extra cushion of safety and security, she asked a nurse to bring one more patient to share the room. But the following day, the patient was discharged and Esther was left alone, vulnerable. Sasa ilikuwa kitu saa tano. Aka kuja. Mi nikuwa nime, sasa nikuwa nimeana na tumbo hivi. Sasa kumbuka niko na reso. Ilikuwa imefunguka kitu hapa juu. Mi nikashitukia mtu wa meketi. Anaanza sasa kuingiza mkono huku kwa mkongo. Sasa naniambia kwa ni, kwa ni uchungu imezidi. Sasa mkono iko huku kwa mkuu. Sasa mi ni limtoa hivi. Nika muambia what are you doing? Aka niambia hapana mi huwa na jari wa hojo wangu sana. Vile unaona nikika, nikikuja, nikirudi. Kuna vile sijui nini na nireta hapa. Nasikia tu huku kwa roho yangu. The incident laid the foundation for the most awful act. Nikaenda Nikaenda tu, nikaenda tu, nika... kwenda kutu kuingia kwa mlango hivi, mi nika mkosa. Kube kuna karumi sasa ukiingia kwa mari ya menita, kuna mpesa mlango main, sasa kuna kengine kama ingia kwa rumi ingine. The room turned out to be a partition part of his office, where George is said to have lured multiple patients under the guise of discussing and reviewing their health status. Esther was just being set up. 
akaenda tena akaangalia the other side na the other side akakuja akaniambia sasa ati unaniambia unaumwa na wapi nikamwambia mimi na kama naweza kukuambia ni kuumwa sasa ni kila mahali akaniambia fanya hivi ebu simama mi vile nilikuwa weak nikamwambia hapana mi kama nikuongea kama nimesimama hapana hiyo kosi sijafanyia akaniambia sini unajali nini leta mikono ah nikamwambia unanisumbua sasa nitatoka na nitarudi kwa room ama nitoke kama ninaendanga kumbuke saa ya mesimama mi ndio ni paso nimeketi akanishika na mikono miwili akan sasa akanileta cross na yeye kabisa do mi najaribu kujivuta vuta nyuma asione kama nafikiria vile anafikiria akaniambia mbona na unaniogopa mimi ni daktari wako akaniambia leta mkono na kumbuka huu mkono ndio ulikuwa na shindano iko hapa akanishika huu mkono mwingine akaniambia nataka uuze huku nasikia nini George the owner of the hospital informed Esther he intended to treat her in a special way aliingiza mkono kwa baika nikashtukia ameashafika huko chini ananiingiza mpaka vidole nini najaribu kabisa kabisa kumtoa huo mkono si kutoa hapa nikamwambia kabisa unaniumiza afadhali utoe kwa sababu hata mimi nikingangana aje sasa nimeona kabisa siwezi akania kanaambia hapana ai kuna vile mtu siwezi kuvumilia hivi sasa hizo mikono iko huku kwa matiti kuna mkono uko huku kwa matiti kuna ingine sasa iko huku chini Esther tried to reach for the door nikamwambia sita entertain na ni entertain na sasa tukitoka hapa hautaamini mimi nikitoka hapa akaniambia hapana unaongea kwa nguvu sana punguza sauti nikamwambia sasa ukicheza na mimi sana naiongeza mpaka to the forest i think akaingia na kare kauoga akaona kabisa hata akijaribu kunifunga mdomo si si kwa si kuongea ndio sasa nikafungua ina nikafungua ile Esther ran back to her initial room but was confused on who to report to because the owner of the hospital had attacked and assaulted her hata ana adabu let me tell you Alikuja akafungua mlango hivi akacheka na akarudisha mlango akatoka akaenda. Yaani alinichekelea kama ile kunisakas. Kwanza kama kuna kitu nimefanya. By the hiyo jioni nilikojekanga hata sijui sijui kama ni juu ile pressure. Set to be discharged the following day, Esther's distress deepened. The hospital added one more day to her treatment since her condition had worsened throwing her much deeper into uneasiness especially when George came over to the hospital the following night as she was watching television with another patient Mi nika nika nikapigua simu nikaenda kuongea nayo pale kwa gate sasa na si akitoka alikuja sasa kama ameniguza huku nyuma ameenda Mi nikaona this is too much kama huyu mwanaume sure hata kafuta kumkondolea macho jana hivi hajasoma chochote Uyu naona hata hata make sure amemalizia Kenya alikuwa anataka. The next day Esther, determined to leave the hospital, told the doctor on duty that she would leave if they didn't discharge her. Mimi hata form nilikuwa napatiwa nikiwa kwa gate ya kuseme ya kuyani ya kuniambia nimekuwa discharged. Nilikuwa nafikishiwa kwa gate na si kuenda hata step 5 nika collapse. Juu hata si nimeachia dawa katikati niko na stress. Mimi mwenye tu alinichukua akani nikamwambia usijaribu kunipeleka huko. Hata nilikuwa na moja kama nimefunga macho. Hata mwenye hata sasa hivi nikakwambia ni nani. Despite her physical recovery, Esther still carries anger and bitterness from her stay at Sipili Maternity Hospital. Overcoming the bad memories has proved difficult for her. Mimi kuna kitu ilinishika na haikuwa hii nishika hapo mbele. Ni wakati nilifika kwa huko kwangu Yaani nilianza mi kind of kujichukia na the reason as to why nilijiuliza kama mzee wa hii miaka ameona mimi nafaa tu kutumua kama takataka what about the rest wenye wananiona kwa barabara We wanted to find out if the claims of sexual assault on female patients admitted here were true so we went covert but unfortunately it didn't take long before we came face to face with the unthinkable Going undercover to investigate whether the owner of Sipili Maternity Hospital George Mbogwa was sexually assaulting his patients or not was risky but necessary. I posed as a 25-year-old student with severe pain due to an ulcer's flare-up. I got registered as Nancy Wanjiko. I am immediately admitted without going through triage or having any symptoms checked. The hospital didn't ask for my ID number, contact or a next of kin. I'm injected with an antibiotic and put on a drip. 
I am then taken to a room where I am on my own and told to lie down on a bed. Later on, a clinical officer comes in to collect a blood sample for a test. He draws blood from my arm without gloves. He then attempts to collect more than just blood. He is fishing for information about me. The clinical officer leaves. After lying down for a few minutes, I see a young girl going for short walks along the corridors. We start talking and I invite her for juice in my room. Out of curiosity, I ask her how her treatment is going at the hospital. We will call her Amina to protect her identity. Amina is enrolled in a school that sends six students to Sipili Maternity Hospital by default. Her family is far away, so the 17-year-old feels she has no one to talk to. So, akikweka yo gel, anakushika kwa mgongo, ama anakushika hape. The eeriness of some of the similarities between Amina and Esther's encounters with George is not lost on me. More shocking is how all this is happening at an isolated area of the hospital where the female wards are located. Amina excuses herself to go lie down in her ward and as I rest for a few minutes, I hear a knock at the door from another visitor. One whose reputation has preceded him for chilling reasons. It is George who is here to counsel me after hearing that my ulcers flare up is as a result of an altercation with my boyfriend. First, he asks me to introduce myself, but then jumps right into the counseling session. And for me to help you, what is it to you for you to be open? Okay, Kunam to Namwana say, and I shall partly keep your poor caraba. So, me Ukujanga, Sazingine Kumana, Labda Kaman, you may funga Shule, to look a quake. George gets a phone call from a patient and tells the person to call the hospital line instead, after which he gets back to examining me, but not before he opens up a flurry of inappropriate questions.
Hello? George receives another phone call from a person who also sounds like a patient. Okay, okay. <laughs> I begin to cry over my situation, and George takes it as an invitation to push the unprofessional boundaries. Tashi, please, I'm not comfortable with you touching me like this. Enjoy your beautiful. I freeze in shock. A feeling of numbness, humiliation, and disgust shrouded in fear engulfs me. I contemplate blowing my cover to confront him. It finally dawns on me that this is more than just covering a story. This is what Esther and Amina had described to me. Hello? George only listens to my plea when a third phone call comes in. He leaves the room shortly after, casually saying that we would talk more later. But as the dimming sun sinks into the horizon, the monster is unleashed again. And this time, George, the hospital owner, targets Amina. I find Amina stripped down naked and shaking uncontrollably. I try to comfort her, but she is inconsolable, and George comes up with an idea of how to stop her from crying. George finally leaves the room, giving Amina and I a chance to talk, and she reveals what happened. I later found out that George had ordered Amina into this abandoned room at the corner of the first floor where an unmade bed and incubator was stored under the pretense that he wanted to apply some gel on her. The nurses later told her not to say anything, otherwise she would ruin the hospital's name and reputation. Amina told me that her self-esteem was scarred by George and left her in intense pain. Things take a bizarre turn and George calls me out of the room as I comfort Amina to explain his side of the story. George implores me repeatedly to speak to Amina so that she doesn't misinterpret what happened. He insists that he has never been inappropriate with his patients and that Amina shouldn't ruin his good name. This only coming minutes after he had visited my room and assaulted me. I go along with his narrative to try and get more information out of him. On my part. I'm a for the positive. That's my advocate. 
I wonder how in the decade that George claims his hospital has been operational, he has managed to keep secret his gross misconduct with patients. George tells me that he is going home, but not before he leaves me with a piece of advice. As much as Mili, Mili in attack Mambomengi, please don't focus on the goal. An example I can give you uh, that you, for you to remember. Um, look, an action of a uh, lion. Lion, he get a good down in a career. Come on, it's all in a career. He is all there. So, in a kibiza, at a kibita in Guinea, Kappa, I like a pala valley. He tells me once more to convince Amina that nothing happened. Then he leaves. <laughs> I am reeling in shock from everything I have just witnessed. Then remembered my source told me that he could come back later in the night to finish what he had started. Therefore, I shouldn't sleep. Not too long after George leaves, Two nurses come to refill my antibiotics. I ask them about what happened to Amina, and to my surprise, they laugh it off. Okay, as the day breaks, I am set to be discharged from the hospital. The staff on shift come to my room to give me my lab test results, but one of the staff members stays behind as the rest proceed to the next patient's rooms. Yeah, I was in the if I thought that the height of arrogance at the hospital was the medic saying that the facility has enough money to make Amina's matter disappear, I was wrong. As I go to the procedure room to be discharged, the medic says the unthinkable. What happened? What happened? What even more disturbing is that Amina's mother sat outside the door where the medic was discussing all these issues. She had heard what happened to her daughter during the night and rushed to the hospital in the morning. 
Although she was reluctant to speak to us initially, she agreed after explaining who we were and asking for her discretion. Nilihangaika sana na nikawa na shida sana. Na ningekuwa na uwezo wa kufika pale kusema ukweli ningefika tu saa hizo na nimtoe saa hizo. Lakini mahali nilikuwa wakati huo kulikuwa mbali kiasi na hospitali, giza ilikuwa inaingia. So sigeweza kushukua pikipiki niende hospitali. Singeweza kushukua gari. So nilisema tu acha tu mtoto akae pale paka siku hii nyingine. Sasa nikaenda nikamshukua nika nikampeleka nika sasa mahali kingine ambapo sasa anapata matibabu. Furious and pained at what her daughter endured, she decided to report the matter to Ngarua Police Station. We asked if we can accompany her. The police entered all the information as we narrated and told Amina to fill out a P3 form. I also report that George sexually assaulted me, but no OB number was issued to the family or me. No one was called into the station for questioning, despite Amina and I providing witness statements of sexual assault and identifying George as the perpetrator. However, according to other victims, this is not the first time this has happened and the police have treated the cases casually. Mimi ni wasikia kesi moja iwaifika mpaka kwa Kenya police, lakini ni huko tu hiyo spiri ya mama fulani pia yeye alikuwa nilikuwa nimesikia tu ni mama tu hivi mzee hivi. Nilisikia tena yeye alidepua huko, lakini wakati walienda akadipoti huko, yeye mwenyewe ati mama adasema ajui hiyo kesi ilienda aliani alizungushwa tu akiamkia akienda huko anaambiwa wewe tunamtafuta anakuja sasa siku itaisha nini u get bored yeye yeah, akachoka akaachana na hiyo maneno Shortly after we visited the police station, another source said she wanted to come forward with more information about the hospital. Agnes, also not her real name, is a former employee at the Sipili Maternity Hospital. She left after discovering several red flags in management that became too much to bear. Initially nikienda hapo nilipata hospitali ikiwa mzuri na hata kama nje watu walikuwa nasema ni mbaya, mimi kwangu nilienda na hiyo moyo tu ati ni pazuri. Kwanza kufanya kazi ndio nikakuja kupata si pazuri. Unapata huyo assistant director. Yeye hajafanya hii medical course, but yeye anabadilisha kulingana na price ya dawa. The negligence at the hospital was not her only concern. Ana waharas nurses sana na masiyo, any female tu. Hata wao wa mama wazee wa kuosha. Kuna wenye anaguza. Yaani tabia yake ni mbaya tu anakupeleka kama room tofauti hivi anakuguzaguza yeye yeah, anataka tu ni kama kukuretu the staff at the hospital have also had limited access to masks and gloves leaving them vulnerable to contracting the covid-19 virus kukipata any case ya covid juu zimekuwa severo wao wanachomoka huwezi wapata tena kwa hiyo hospitali mpaka wakati kutakuja kufumigetiwe kutudie tu hivyo ndio utawaona wamerudi Agnes adds that sheer desperation keeps attracting patients and staff to go to the facility even when it affects their well-being. In desperation patients wako nayo juu hii area yote hakuna hospitali nyingine iko na iko accredited na NHIF. So of those nurses wako na desperation tu ya kazi. Utapata unajua sasa hii kuko flooded sana nurses ni wengi. Students from schools in the area are also referred to the hospital by default. As a result, Many female students are believed to have suffered in silence at the hands of George. 
This document obtained from a school in the area shows how the hospital charges students out of their school fees despite their NHIF insurance covering their treatment, which means that the hospital receives double payments for services rendered. But that isn't all. One George Mbugwa, uh, trained at St. Luke's North Kinangop School of Nursing, and uh, his license number is shown there, which happened to have expired on uh, f uh, February 29th, year 2020. So as of now, he's not a person who is in good standing with the regulatory authority. So he's practicing at a hospital with an expired license mm -hmm. because we went mm -hmm. there in 2021. Mm -hmm. Wow. The law says that we must renew our license for us to be eligible to practice. So Oh, that will be the, 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 the penalty is prescribed within the Nurses Act. But how is it possible that George has managed to operate with an expired license over one year without any action being taken against him? In the private facilities, is a bit difficult because of surveillance uh, challenges. So you, you, the best and the only way we can actually uh, ascertain his status in terms of so far as uh, his licensure uh, is when it comes to review. We put our evidence of what transpired while I was admitted at the hospital to the chair of the association. <sighs> you know, this guy could be psychotic. Mm -hmm. This guy could be psychotic. Mm -hmm. And somebody's wife, somebody's daughter, somebody's mother, who has gone innocently to seek uh, medical or health. Uh, care and yet when you go there it's more or less like uh, uh, you've gone to be tormented uh, both physically and psychologically. But just what is the background of the owners of the hospital? George, who hails from Nyahururu, is said to have started his career as a nurse at a Catholic health facility in Laikipia before he and his wife Monica Mbogwa opened the Sipili Maternity Hospital in 2010 with George taking the role of director and Monica as the assistant director. Monica oversees the day-to-day -day runnings of the hospital and the payment of patients' treatment. She is accused of tampering with which medication a patient will receive, depending on the price. In these receipts obtained from a patient who had visited the facility, he was denied using his NHIF card and was forced to pay a bill of nearly 3,000 shillings, including some tests that the family says were not done. As indicated in the receipts, he was served by Monica Mbogwa. Dr. Peter Kamunyo, the CEO of the National Hospital Insurance Fund, says that while further investigations will need to be done to ascertain the level of fraud that has been committed at the facility, NHIF has a no-tolerance policy when it comes to the vice. As NHIF, we, we do not condone any form of fraud and um, as you know, healthcare is a very emotive issue. The minute fraud is actually even suspected, uh, we have the power, we suspend immediately a facility for 90 days pending investigations. And then thereafter, the case is presented uh, uh, to the board for further action, which includes recovery of funds which have been um, pilfered or ill-gotten, uh, um, or suspension actually uh, for even five years, uh, and even, um, uh, at some point, complete degazettement. Because defrauding the fund is literally denying Kenyans health care, which is literally leading to actually killing people. He then came to my room to explain his side. We also presented our evidence to Dr. Kamunyo. the hospital. And this was the first night that I was admitted. Dr. Jackson Kyoko, who serves as a Kenya Health Professionals Oversight Authority CEO, told us through an audio call that any facility found involved in any misconduct, especially sexual abuse, will be held subject to harsh repercussions. Any person who is sexually abusing patients or even the health workers, that becomes a criminal offense. And number two, if that hospital denies uh, patients from using the NHIF card and demands uh, payment through cash, Again, that is also a criminal offense. Um, if the owner of that hospital is a, is a health professional, 
and is engaged in such malpractices, then such a person uh, shall be held capable and shall be subjected to the necessary uh, professional disciplinary uh, uh, processes. And the deeper we continued our background check on Sipili Maternity Hospital, the more skeletons come out of the fraud that has cloaked it. Not his real name, Ian, was also swindled out of using his NHIF card to pay for treatment. <laughs> On our super cover, uh, diseases, surgical issues of the eye, they are covered. So if you're admitted with an eye problem in hospital and you require surgery, that would be covered. If um, there is a, an infection, uh, th that would be covered. When his pregnant wife was due for delivery, Ian was also forced to pay for maternity services. So the baby in the coke, Maternity services um, um, are covered, uh, and you know, on our maternity benefit, um, even uh, normal delivery, cesarean delivery, and then we also have Linda Mama, and the only thing that you need. Uh, to have is to show proof that you're, 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 you're expectant. Ian was only issued with a discharge summary and no receipt, something that I also experienced at the hospital when I was given this balance to pay and not a receipt with the breakdown of the treatment I received until I insisted on the breakdown. <laughs> Natasha, who was also admitted at the facility, details how she was offered a payment ultimatum when she tried to seek treatment. Nikawambia George and Monica also opened the Sipili funeral home and profited from it. Kuna patient ashaifika hapo. Mama, akawa ni mgonjwa sana. Na relatives wakawa wako desperate wakaona mwenye hospitali akafika hapo akaongea na wao, kawaambia huyu hata tusingangane sana huyu tu ni kama ameshakufa. Hata batakikufa tutampeleka tu wapi? Tutampeleka tu pale kwa fimen unero huma tutaenda mbali nikasikia madaktari wakakuja wakajaribu wakangangana wakalisa state patient akawa sawa the following day patient akatoka nje akaanza kuota jua akawa anatembea na huyo alikuwa ashamsindikisha anasema atapelekwa huko chini kaanza kuwa mzuri na akadischargei wa relatives wakawa wana complain sana juu ya hiyo incident agnes's narration was not an isolated incident we learned that a family had been thrown into the cruel vortex of mourning after their loved one passed away during our visit. He had been admitted at the Sipili Maternity Hospital, but was meant to be referred to another hospital. They delayed transferring him, and he succumbed to his illness. 
Residents in the town who knew the late Chamaja are now angry over his death. Hospital regulators are encouraging patients to safeguard themselves against fraud. What we are encouraging our patients is to interact with the different media that we have to inform them of the benefits and their rights. During our investigation, we encountered many other victims, but they were understandably too afraid to speak on camera. <laughs> Unazajua kwa roho yako kabisa na unajua vizuri hii kazi umefanya. Na labda haujajulikana ama labda hata hakuna kenye unaona inaweza according kwako unaona hakuna kitu unaweza unaweza fanyiwa. Mimi naweza kukuambia uache. Kwa sababu hata kama tunaweza kujua ama ujulikana na na, na usitukuliwa tu wao yote uongope tu Mungu mwenye amekupea hiyo kazi. Watu wananchi waache kunyanyaswa na pia kama Sijui tutafanya nini. Kukua na hospitali ingine wadha inaweza tumia hiyo NHIF. Alafu, tunaweza badilisha. Unajua si lazi maukana nini moja kama ikusaidi. Ine kitu yote yote tu inaweza fanyika tu. Provided tu society mepata haki yake. Wali kama hao patient watu wanafika hapo wamepata haki yao. Achukuri wetu hatia. Njoo hiyo siki tukidogo wamefanya. For the decade that the Sipili Maternity Hospital in Naikipia has been operational, it had the potential to help the local community with access to health care. The chilling tales of what victims have experienced here will remain enrobed in the darkness that has covered the doctored evil for so long until now. Gena Kirori, NTV Investigates.